Okay, uh, we are live. Good morning, Facebook. Welcome to another, hey, that's us, look, there we are. <laughs> Welcome to another Monday morning live, uh, all of us, Jamaica Miles. Sean Young. And today's conversation is about Black August, Black liberation, and Black division. So if you've followed all of us at all, you know that one of the main points we make constantly is about our unity, about coming together, uh, about no longer being divided in ways that are used to control us, to exploit us, to, express, to oppress us, um, such as race, gender, economic status, ability levels, all of those different things. So happy Black August. Black August. Happy Black August to everyone out there watching. And unfortunately, when we talk about division, there is also division within the Black community. And it shows up in different ways. And we don't want to spend too much time talking about it because, one, we don't want to give it that kind of energy. And two, we want to talk more about unity and strength and liberation. That's right. I mean, what what, you, what we put our energy in is super important. I mean, we can't run, we can't waste our energy and time on things that aren't really going to be productive. But I think that having this conversation about division is important, and is is going to be time well spent. We don't need to spend all our time talking about it, and we won't. Um, but the division that we see in our community, um, in in every which way it shows up, um, is important to highlight because it's there, and these are conversations that are already happening. So let's, let's have that conversation. Let's have that discussion. Um, especially in, in this moment of Black August when we're talking about, you know, liberation of black people and the revolutionary history of, of August uh, in this country and across the world, actually. Yeah. So we've seen a uh, division within the black community show up in, in different ways. Um, one of the things that I've talked about recently is that elected officials like to pick and choose which black people they talk to. They thrive off of that division of who is the right black person. And um, we talked last week about respectability. Unfortunately, sometimes though, even amongst us in, in the black community, we will perpetuate that. Uh, we will speak down against other black people or, or call people out instead of calling them in. Because understand me, I by no means am saying, oh, well, if a black person is doing something that they shouldn't be doing, we shouldn't talk about it. What I'm saying is if I, especially in this moment of us fighting for black liberation in black August, uh, fighting against <laughs> all of the systems of oppression and its target being black people, I am not going to be the one that is adding to that pile of look at how bad black people are as a black woman. And I would hope that other black people in turn would do the same thing and say, you know, I really just don't agree with what Jamaica said and that's just not right. I'm gonna call Jamaica. Well, this idea of calling people in or calling people out, I, I think like speaks to this, the, the tools of the oppressor. Right. So what tools do you want to actually use? Do you want to use the tools of community and stuff that uh, I think that in this moment, especially as black liberation fighters, that we're all trying to kind of foster amongst each other? Or do you want to use the tools of the oppressor? The white supremacy, I mean, at the at the I mean, has affected all of us in some way. Right. I fight against different kind of ways. I was conditioned to think it's even continues to this day. And I'm sure that there's folks out there, if you're being honest and there's a little wind going on right now, like you, you have those same battles. Right. And I, I feel like I feel like the association of power. Right. And, and the association of what white supremacy is sometimes isn't seen. Right. It's obfuscated a little bit. because You don't say you don't think that you're doing it. Like I'm in this fight where I'm doing this a particular way and I'm black. But the ways in which we divide up each other is the same ways in which white supremacy thrives. Right. And those are the things that we need to be self-reflective on and begin to call out more and more. Because it's really unnecessary when you come to think of, when you come to think of it, right? Um, it's one thing, I think, if you actually see real harm and you're trying to address it and you're trying to do something about it, then you can, uh, by all means, call it out and uphold that, right? But we don't need to dis dispose of people, 
Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. we've had enough of that in our community. We had enough of that enacted against us. What we need to be doing, I think, is exposing people to different experiences, exposing them to different ways to think and different ways to see their history. Because if we believe that this society has conditioned everyone in a particular way, if we believe that, right, and then when people show up and they and they are acting out all the ways in which we believe that that conditioning has has shown up, then why aren't we trying to expose them to something? And why aren't we educating and teaching? Why aren't we having real conversations? What is the point of actually being angry and calling people out in ways that are not constructive at all? And really may even point to some other ills. Yeah, uh, it's it's tough. I got to tell you, one of the things that I've, I've mentioned, I've actually mentioned to you, is this battle without and the battle within. We are constantly fighting this outside battle of the oppressive system of white supremacy, of of individuals that want to cause us harm because we look different than what is the norm, whiteness, white supremacy. And then to also have that battle within. I never want to be fighting amongst ourselves with with our our black brothers, sisters, and non-binary individuals um, in this moment or any moment. Let's have a conversation because as you mentioned last week, it is a multi-head, multi-arm, multi, the ugly beast, right? Yeah. That yeah. comes at us from all these different directions. Yeah. So we need all of these different directions. And as black people and people of color, we have different experiences and different ways to attack yeah. that beast that is attacking us. And if we work collectively, even when it's different, because we can do things different ways and still have the same goal. Let's attack the beast. Let's not attack each other. I mean, the, the idea of this many heads, many arms, many legs, many approaches to attacking the beast of white supremacy, I, I think it's a real valid one. I often bring it up to folks, other organizers, if you, anybody's watching this that, that, you know, that you know, have sat in conversation with me, I always talk about the fact that there's no one person or one organization that's going to change white supremacy. That's going to change all the conditions out there set against us, all the institutions. No one organization it ain't going to happen through elections. It ain't going to happen through direct service. It ain't going to happen with just talking to the city official. It takes all of us in this work. Wherever you sit, wherever your lane is, wherever, whatever work you're doing for the community, it takes all of us coming together and supporting one another in this fight um, to actually make change happen. It's all of us coming to the table, having our hands in the change and making that thing happen. Um, there's so many different ways that I want to talk about division. I don't want to go too long, though, because we got to talk about we unity. We have so much to talk yeah, about. We, we want to get to the unity. And I think that, um, like, we're just going to transition to it. And the, the last thing that I want to say is, Sean mentions it all the time. There are so many great groups and organizations that are doing different types of work. Uh, and real quick, I'm going to mention it again later. On Wednesday in Townsend Park in Albany, a lot of groups and organizations are coming together to tell the community, hey, this is my group, this is my organization, this is what we're doing, this is how you can get involved. Because I don't care which group you join, just join one. Right. I don't care how you show up, just show up. Maybe it is direct service. Um, community Matters does community cleanups, is getting resources directly to the community. I know that in Albany there have been different walks and conversations. Um, big up to Elevate 518. Great time this weekend. Looking forward to seeing you on Wednesday. There are different ways for us to do this work. And every single one of us is needed. So let's figure out how we can all work together because it is about unity, which was a strong message in the foundation of Black August. Yeah, absolutely. And just like, just, you know, I also want to bring up, you know, there's also division, not even just say how we think about approaching this, there's division and just seeing the different ways in which, uh, you know, this kind of pain and anguish is happening in our society. I've, you've heard all the shootings that have happened. Yeah. Uh, in the last several weeks uh, up here in the Capitol District, and it's affected every city. Yeah. Um, and there's folks out there doing the work. We have ceasefire, we have snug, we have all these folks out here trying to figure out how we talk with our youth, how we talk with them and have conversation to figure out how we bring this to an end uh, as, as best we can. But I want to be clear, like the conditions that have been set against us has influenced what we're seeing as well. 
And all we need to make, have, make sure we're having conversations with our youth and giving them all the resources that they need that we can muster up. We also need to all acknowledge the systems and structures mm. that have impoverished our communities and make sure that those conditions would exist of scarcity, of need, of this kind of idea of being masculine in a way that may, that is harmful to your own community. Yeah. Right. And then I also want to address the fact that let's not get so always caught up in this idea of like this idea of black on black crime. These are crimes of proximity. These are crimes that are amongst the folks, the people that live and are amongst each other. I, if there's if there's eighty nine percent of 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 say black crimes committed by someone black, right? Mm -hmm. There's another eighty five or something instead of white crimes committed by white and yeah. any other culture, et yep. cetera, et cetera, down yeah. the line. Yep. Um, white people kill white people too. It's just it is what it is. Um, yeah. Because as Sean mentioned, it's proximity and the lessons and structures. The message is loud and clear that violence is the answer. We live in a violent culture. That that we should drop bombs, that we should go to war, that we should fight. I have a hard time not to go down the rabbit hole. I'm having a hard time finding a cartoon I want my kid to watch because everything is about fighting. Everything is about violence. You got to you, you got to fight. You got to protect your own. You got to take care of yourself. It should only be you. And don't you worry about anybody else. And that also is a kind of division. No, nah, that's a fact. And I want to bring one more point about some of the stuff we see in our community. Um, shout out to Band of Brothers, uh, Nationally Touching Greatness. Um, this idea of us coming together uh, as a youth was was rooted in fighting oppression. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. rooted in protecting the yep. community. Gangs are not, are not yeah. bad things in their foundation. In their foundation, not at all. Like you may have some things that have happened that we don't like and are uncomfortable with, and that have caused pain in the community. Yeah. Of course, that's the truth. The record is clear with that. But the foundation, the foundation of coming together, began in this idea of fighting oppression. Yeah, Black Panthers were a gang, y'all. Yeah, for sure. They definitely sure. weren't accepted by the yeah. system. No, um, not yes, at all. Yes, the FBI did kill Fred Hampton. But let's let's switch that um, because we don't want to talk just just about the destruction and the pain and the division. Mm -hmm. We are in Black August, which is about celebration and liberation. And where that foundation came from, which I am sure lots of people do not understand, we see parties all the time. Mm -hmm. We're gonna celebrate our blackness. We're gonna have black joy. We're gonna have music and, and all of that wonderful part of celebrating and expressing ourselves. Uh, I grew up learning African dance and those drums were real. And that is a part of it. But when Definitely. we talk about the foundation of it, we talk about freedom in real ways that we were just talking about last month on our freedom tour. Releasing people from cages. The foundation of Black August is about ending the prison industrial complex. It's about releasing our political prisoners, right? It, it's about celebrating that, that, that revolutionary spirit, all those that are, we have lost in this fight uh, for liberation of our people. Um, the, the celebration of who we are and our culture and our value and the fact that we are kings and queens and blessed um, is one thing and that always needs to be upheld. I think that we also need to be understanding that this is about the political prisoners plight. Yeah. Prisoners who have not only political prisoners, mind you, because if you're a prisoner and you're a black or brown in this community, you are a political prisoner in the sense that this society has in every way possible yep. worked against you to put you in a position that you are currently in today if you are incarcerated right now or have been formerly incarcerated. So in that sense, we need to acknowledge, I think I read an article today about George Jackson um, and I'll tell you a little bit of history of me and George Jackson as far as I understand him. I read him, I was 19 years old when I first went to, um, when I first was incarcerated. Uh, George Jackson was 19 years old when he was sentenced to one to life um, in prison. Uh, he came to prison the same way that I did. I didn't really, I didn't have any connection to politics, no religion or anything like that. I just was his brother in the streets, um, got caught up and, and was just living my life. But reading him and reading that revolutionary spirit that came to him while he was incarcerated, he had a one to life and he never got out again. If people that don't know the history, he was murdered um, on his murdered. 11th year, 11th year in his bed. But he had become in that time something so powerful, right? 
it's something so powerful. He had wrote two books, um, that's Blood of My Eye and Soul Dad Brothers. And he was so powerful in the movement that they had to assassinate him. And it was something that really touched me. They were thinking about his brother, Jonathan Jackson, who went to war for him in the courts and died trying to free him and the Soul Dad Brothers. I mean, the history is deep. Um, it affected me in such a way that this is who you see today showing up. Like those were the seeds that grew in me, um, watching that revolutionary spirit from, from the 70s. And it was just, it, I mean, the 60s and 70s, it was just so impactful. And I just want to tell you that history, if y'all don't know it, please look it up. Um, it's important that we understand our history and why we're celebrating something. If you do not know, now you know some of it. I mean, it's even deeper than that because you go to the Haitian Revolution and you go even deeper than that. You go to 1619 and you're talking about the flight. August. Like, you, August, August 1619, yeah. August and blackness. There's just so much history around August and blackness. And uh, Ava DeVoe has a uh, documentary specifically about August 28th and mm -hmm. all the things that happened on that day, not going down that rabbit hole either. But it is revolution, it is liberation, and revolution from within the wall. Yeah. From within a cage. Mm -hmm. People unifying and fighting for freedom in the most severe of circumstances. You know, that's why they call it the belly of the beast, right? You right inside where the systems and structures of oppression are at their most heightened. Right where 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 racism, white supremacy show up right directly in your face, like you can't you can't hide from it, because all the ways in which, like I say this a lot when we're on the mic, um, when we're on different spots in our actions, like all the ways in which we come out and show up, and we are rightly frustrated or angered and, and sorrow with the losses that we see here in this community that have been made live, uh, that have been put on Facebook Live, right? And we're like, what the fuck? That happens every day in prison. That's the status quo there. Right, so those people that can actually learn to fight and stand in that battle, I mean, I mean, it's a different hit. It's yeah. a different type of fight. It's a different type of liberation. It's, it's it's because it's so much in your face, and maybe the more it gets in our face, the more that fight happens out here in the community. More fighters we get coming to this battle to help us win, because liberation ain't gonna be easy. I go yeah. back to the division we just talked about a second yeah. ago. With the division, they went. Yeah. In unity, we went. Yeah. And understanding that understanding that is the first step to get this battle won because we all in this fight to win. So there's a, there's a quote. I told you I wasn't going to let the quote go. There's a quote. Um, it's from Sundiata Tate of the San Quentin Six who describes Black August as a time to embrace the principles of unity, self-sacrifice, political education, physical training, and resistance. So Black August is we can celebrate but there's so much more. It's work. Yeah. It is work. Yeah. It's the fight. It's doing the work. It's organizing. It's talking to people. It's the political education of ourselves and and learning more and fighting against the systems and structures that try to give us narratives and messages that harm us and divide us. Um, an active resistance. Yeah. I, I want to say like. Think about this. I mean, I think we all understand that this liberation won't be one for the asking, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're really trying to get in this work and you're really trying to make change happen, it's going to take you getting down and getting the research. I see somebody brought up research in the chat just now. Like, search your, search your history. Understand where we were to understand where we are and then where we're going, right? Okay. Um, and it's, it's important that we do that. It's important that we look into our history and understand what we're doing. And it's important that we're disciplined in that. Like, critical, that's the train. And critical and reliable sources. Wikipedia, <clears throat> Wikipedia is not a reliable source. You can go and see what it says on Wikipedia, but that's, you don't stop there. That's, that's not a reliable source. Okay, I just, it's come up. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, we don't call people out. We call them in. in. Are we going to do a private call? Okay. Yes, it'd be a private conversation to talk right. about, you know, reliable sources and, and history and books and talking with each other. Like we're having this morning conversation with, with the people on Facebook. It, there's not a lot of back and forth. We got 51 people watching, which is great. Even more people are going to see it later because that's what happened last week. And it's, we appreciate you sharing this message and these words. It needs to be a conversation in your communities where you're speaking with each other and talking about these things and other things and 
articles and blog posts and um, different avenues of media and communication, not just mainstream media. Please no. Not just please them. Please no, please no. And consider not just the source, but also the context of what it's in. So, because we've been out in these streets, right? Um, it may be Black August right now, but we've been fighting for Black liberation, well, I mean, all of our lives, because how would we be alive if we weren't? But also, just literally and intentionally, we've been doing this work since March of talking to people and, and working together and finding that unity within groups and organizations and individuals, but it takes our own growth and understanding. That's right. And y'all need to do that too. I mean, be to be clear, I mean, we, I'm just, you know, I'm a love history and I'm just hearing you talk, like history is alive and well, right? History is alive in everything and every breath you take and every way you think and the way you value and the way you deal with folks in your community. So all the ways in which we show up is an expression of our history, whether and that's personal history and our community history and our society's history. Right, and it's important that I think we understand that as well. Um, and to your point about mistakes, to your point yeah. about learning, we all grow. We all have the capacity to grow. Let me yeah. let me say that we all mm -hmm. have the capacity to grow if mm -hmm. we do the work. It's no if we make mistakes in life, um, the same way our community has made mistakes, right? Has 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 erred in judgment and decision making uh, as a collective. We can learn from that. We can't ignore that history. No. Nope. We can learn from it. And we're not always going to be tied directly to it. Like, we can't change. Like, that's just never going to happen. Yeah. We learn from our mistakes, and then we move forward. And that has happened, I think, a lot. Do not think, when I we said earlier about being disposable, yeah. like, we don't need to just be disposing people. We need to begin to expose people to differences, expose people to I'm, other ways of thinking. I'm just loving that a lot. Mm -hmm. We should not dispose people. We need to expose people to different ways of thinking. I just make that up. You just made that up. Nah, that was good. That's mine, y'all. That's not her. She's going to use it. I'm not. No, I am both and. <laughs> Anyways, I, so as recently as yesterday, I made a mistake and called myself out on my live uh, video that is on my personal page. I said something that was harmful. I'm not going to repeat it because it was harmful and I, I don't want to say those words, but I said it and realized it in real time. Oh my gosh. And instead of pretending like I didn't say it and just keep going live on Facebook, I said, I should not have said that. And I'm not going to say that again. It was harmful and I don't want to be harmful. It's okay to make mistakes. Let's learn from them and move forward. Let's find ways that we are unifying around our, our common knowledge even when it's inaccurate and harmful because we're all taught the same things in this society of whiteness in our public schools in our institutions including prisons and jails most harmful places in america and the world so let's find ways that we are having those conversations and coming together and saying all right so if the entire world tells us that there are men and women and that's it why is that a problem? And how is that anti-black? Yes, it is anti-black to be homophobic or transphobic or to say that it is simply a binary. That's anti-blackness. Talk about it. Unpack it. Find ways to move forward and unlearn the harm that you've been taught. That's liberation. That is liberation. And let's connect that to prison, to our prison industrial complex. Happening. Which is like, the foundation of Black August. Let's think about it. Um, if we're talking about uh, out here and we're making mistakes of, of how we speak about something and then be able to somehow figure out where we've been wrong, adjust that, and then to move forward with it, why aren't we also talking about the way in which our folks are incarcerated right now who have been incarcerated for any number of reasons? If there's an opportunity for us to still believe that we are a community, which we all, I do believe that, and Jamaica believes that, then we need to be calling those folks in to figure out what the issues are. And I believe a lot of our issues are societal, not just personal, because society has actually influenced a lot of decisions that we make. But if we're going to also talk about the personal choices that we make, we need to allow people the space 
yeah. to grow and to learn from whatever um, whatever has happened. And I keep shaking the table because I'm very expressive when I talk. <laughs> Just get but, bang, bang, bang. But, but I think that it's important that we do that as well. We need to be having those type of conversations too because our community folks aren't disposable. They, no. have oppor- they should have the opportunity and support to be successful, if that's what we actually want. Which currently, that's not what the society wants. No, 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 no. You, you, you go to jail or prison and you are branded forever uh, and, and told, uh, go pull yourself up by your bootstraps. This is America. Anyone can be anything. You just got to work really hard, even though we're going to give you no support, no assistance. We're going to make you check a box. We're going to tell you that you have to be reminded every single day of one instance in your life that you must just be steeped in forever. Um, and then if you are one of the lucky ones and you, you, cross off, you check all the little boxes. I did this and I followed this rule and I did what that officer said and I listened to this other person and I followed those rules. And now I too am a positive contributing citizen of this community and this country because I did all the white things. I mean, all the right things. That's just a couple people. And, and, and I don't think it's at all realistic because even in those instances, there's support, there's, there's community, there's other people that help you in some way, in some way, even when you don't see it, like I didn't get to where I am all by myself. I, I definitely worked hard and went through a bunch of shit, but I didn't, this isn't because I worked really hard and no there were people that helped me along the way and we're supposed to help each other and society says i ain't giving you shit you messed up once you just a fuck up and just go get out my face you figure it out on your own i'm not here to help you they're not really here to help anybody and then when <laughs> you go back to uh using the underground economy because you need to eat or you got a family to take care of you somehow made another mistake as opposed to you found ways to survive. Um, and all of that, all that stuff, like, you know, I can't believe she was a prostitute or, oh my gosh, did you see what he did? Listen, there are so many things to unpack, but if we're gonna pull it back to someone was incarcerated, convicted in a system that has always been targeted against them. And then given no resources or support, but definitely given more tools of violence while on the inside. What? I mean, from personal experience, I just speak to your your point of support. Um, It's important that you have it. Like, don't believe the hype that, you know, this idea, this this rugged individual, this idea of, like, pick yourself by your bootstrap, you can make it happen. You can be as determined and, self, and, and self-motivating as, as you want to be. Without the support of your community, without support of others to kind of help you walk that path, like, you're not going to go as far as you may think. And then I want to, like, we need to understand what we mean by success. What, is, what does success actually right. mean for people? Right? Is it simply that I have a job and I, and I, and I have an apartment? Um, but I can't afford other, you know what I mean? Other parts that, yeah. that give me quality of life. But what does success actually mean? And think about where you at, because we have this, like, we have this idea that if, if I can somehow, and this is, this is what people often do. Um, I've seen it and this is not calling you out. If this is you, this is calling you in. Um, we have this idea that if we are not where we want to be, we can push somebody else down make me make ourselves feel a little bit better now that's the yeah. drum major instinct and i heard that from mlk if you don't know the drum major instinct just look it up it's this this idea of vying for distinction it's it shows up in so many different ways in the society it's not even funny and i won't give you all of that but drum major instinct mlk powerful words from that from from my one of our greatest black leaders in, in, in our community um check him out um but it's important i think that you know, as you tap, as you tap the screen, and I it's bouncing around. <laughs> you just told me not to do. I made the screen bounce. That we it's important. I, it's just important. I think that we um, 
we support our community in every way they are. Like if you're incarcerated, if you're out here, whatever, how you show up, substance abuse, mental health, um, whatever you have that we support one another, that's the way forward. Calling people out, uh, causing more harm isn't mm-hmm. going to help us. We've done that as society, cause more harm to people than done really good for folks. That mm-hmm. hasn't helped. We ended up, now we're about almost 3 million people incarcerated, most of them black and brown people. The complex is real. It's money yeah. pushed. Um, yeah. And it's something that in black liberation we continue to fight. It's liberation for us. It's liberation for those behind the wall. And it's liberation that I think that I'll be fighting for for the rest of my life. Um, and I hope that you all that are joining in know that the work that we talked about earlier the discipline that it's going to take to keep this, what was a moment to turn it into the movement, to turn it into just in life yeah. for my grandkids. Like they need to be not fighting the same fight that I fought and that our ancestors fought before us. We want to push them to the place where they are actually living in a society that we've been fighting for and created for them, right? They'll have their own battles. Let's let it not be a color of their skin, right? Let it, it not be nice. that. Let it not be mass incarceration and poverty, healthcare, political equity. Let it be something else. That, that'd that be great. I do want to slightly tangentially talk about um, in Black August, blackness is not one thing. It's not, um, when we talked about division earlier, there are differences in, in the black community. There are differences in the way we approach things. There are different levels of knowledge and understanding. There are different cultures. Um, when we talk about Black August, it also makes me think about um, there's not going to be a Latin fest this year. So if we're talking about blackness, there's a whole diaspora because true indeed. enslaved Africans didn't just land on this part of the continent. That's It wasn't like one boat said, I'm putting all of y'all right here and that's it islands and countries um all over the place yeah, the yeah. it, it's our blackness and our, our our strength and our beauty and and all of those things flows across so many different cultures and ethnicities and for us to have that unity requires an acknowledgement of that and we talked last week we know that colorism is real we know that anti-blackness is real we know the, the, the struggle to try to be closer to whiteness is real because of white supremacy, because of colonization. Um, and we need to fight against that. We, we need our Latino and Latina and Latinx um, brothers, sisters, and non-binary individuals to be with us, and we need to be with them. Um, I had a wonderful time at Latin Fest last year. I uh, took my two little babies with me, and the drums, the drums, I, I, again, I mentioned earlier, uh, African dance class, just those drums, and you could feel that connection. I didn't feel as if I wasn't supposed to be there at Latin Fest. When I heard those drums, I was like, I'm still home. <laughs> I'm still home. My blackness didn't go anywhere because I was at Latin Fest. So when I think about Black August and Black Liberation, in our unity and political education, that needs to be part of the conversation as well. How are we unifying with with our, our Puerto Rican family, with our Dominican family, with our Cuban family? And maybe we've not done that enough. Um, I know that we had a strong Puerto Rican presence when we were in Troy. There's no question about that. Um, and love those powerful speakers, powerful. When we say unity and we say Black August and we say Black liberation, it is so much bigger than what I think some people imagine because we need to reimagine what we're talking about. We do need to reimagine what we're talking about. And the diaspora is real. Like, yeah. our look at our complexions, like, we run the rainbow, right? The diaspora is real. Um, we've I, touched every I single... You got what? I got saying for it. So, I cut him off. I try not to do it too often, but sometimes I'm like, no, I need to say this thing, I need to say this thing. So a friend of mine, his grandmother used to say, um, blackness is from snow to crow. Mm. Mm. From snow to crow. From snow to crow. Y'all get that? Y'all ain't miss that? Y- from you didn't miss it? From snow to crow. Mm-hmm. Blackness. Blackness, from snow to crow. 
test. And we ain't doing the brown paper bag test because that's whiteness and colonization and white supremacy. So we ain't doing that shit. Those are those ways, those are the divisions that we're talking about mm -hmm. that we're no longer adhering to. That's not liberation. That's oppression. That's using the tools of the, oppress the oppressor. And we're not about that. We're about black liberation for all black people, for all blackness, for all people of color, for indigenous people. That's going to be another topic for another time. Yeah, for sure. But here we are, Black August, Black Liberation, talking about political education and unity and, and training for resistance. Once again, that's to the discipline. Like, if you're going to get in this work, you need to be searching, researching, and getting in community with those of like mind and having these conversations. History is alive and well. These conversations about the change we want in our community need to also be alive and well, and they're active. They're, it's an action. This work is active. It's not just all. It's not just coming out and doing the demonstrations with us and ending up these rallies and taking on these marches. All of that is important. Do not yeah. mistake my words. All of that is important. Yeah. Those are the ways in which we can keep continue to put pressure on those in power to make the changes that we want. But there's more work needed. Understand why you're in this fight. Why are you in this fight? Understand the history of this fight. I haven't always been in this fight. I'll admit that to you quick. I told you earlier, I went to prison. I was a, I was a teenager. I started reading about George Jackson way back then. I didn't come, I didn't make all the changes that I needed to make until more recent, until I got older. I got a little more gray in my hair to understand <laughs> the, like my place in my community. And all, in all seriousness, yeah. I think about the way in which I grew up in this community. Um, and I lived in, in four y'all out here in the capital region from Hamilton here to Arbor Hill. I got family everywhere. Right to East Flatbush, Brooklyn, to Harlem. I got family all over to South Bronx. Right, I, I got them all over, and I lived in all those communities, and I understood. I think at the time that I didn't have no real place there. Like I had no, I didn't understand what it was to be a part of city council, to be a part of leadership in a community. I thought that the our plight was the plight that we witness every day that show up on the t on news. Right, I thought that was for us. I thought that being a man meant being violent being angry, never shedding a tear, and just being tough. All those are systems and structures that influence that thinking. It wasn't just me thinking that on my own. My society showed me that, yeah. right? It made no real place for me. This is something that James Baldwin often talks about. It hasn't made or evolved any place for you. What do you do in that society? How do you deal with that? At the age I am now and the years before this, I learned to fight. I see all of y'all showing up in the moment that are learning how to fight. This conversation is about Black August and liberation. This is us learning how to fight. We are having this conversation. We are having this conversation because we're going to win, right? And we I want all of y'all to be win. in this. Yeah, I believe that we will win. And we want all of y'all in this fight to win with us. But the only way we win is if we do the work. Study, train, be disciplined. Show up. This work is needed. I'm not today who I was yesterday. Facts. Or last week or last month. Um, I've made lots of mistakes. I've definitely learned a lot. Um, this is about us being the change and creating the change. And that let's be real about what's a difference, what's tension versus toxicity, as well as let me let me let me stop you there for uh -huh. a second. This is a brother of mine. I'm getting a phone call from a brother of mine behind the wall. I got to pick this up. Yeah, no, go ahead. Prepaid collect call from. This is live, y'all, so pay attention. New York State Department of Corrections and Community Supervision. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. To we ask if you want to be on speaker before I just keep him on speaker. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for using. We're, we're, we're going to let people decide for themselves whether or not Yo. they want to be on live. Yo. Good morning, bro. Hey, listen, I'm going to take you off a of speaker real quick because you're on speaker right now. And I'm on Facebook Live having a discussion about Black August. So if you want to speak to that truth, give me a second and let's tell the people. So while Sean's doing that, um, up, let's bro? remember that there are there are differences I'm I'm, in, I'm in how people live. view things. So whether it's political or personality, so talking about whether it's tension or toxicity, there's a difference because it is very possible that it's not that it is a political difference, but a personality disorder. And those two things are not the same thing. Um, it is not always that it's tension between individuals, but that there's toxicity. 
And we need to address that as a community and to call each other into that and have conversations so that we can have that unity and do the political education and work together. Uh, because there are people inside the wall that are reaching out. When we went to every single jail, we heard people banging on windows, calling out to us. They could hear us screaming to them that we are here for you, that we care about you. Because when we say Black Lives Matter, we mean all Black lives, including the Black lives behind the wall, those that are being treated in the worst conditions right now, those in solitary confinement, those who have spent their lives inside for possibly one mistake or at least one one instance that they were convicted of that they didn't always commit and given harsher sentences than their white counterparts. I've mentioned it before, when a, when a young white man rapes a white girl behind a dumpster and the judge says, well, I don't want to ruin his life by sending him to prison, but we see black people sent to prison every single day for the smallest amount of narcotics, nonviolent offenses, locked away for the rest of their lives, we know that this is an unjust system based on racism and that we need to change that, that we don't have liberation until all of us are free. And not just free from the systems and structures that we faced in our society, the, the redlining and the underfunding of our schools, the lack of health care, doctors still treating black people as if they have a higher tolerance to pain than their white counterparts or a lack of housing that covid has had the worst impact on black and brown people than anyone else it's not just that it is so much more and that's why we're here for liberation and that's why we're celebrating black august and that's why on wednesday we're going to be at townsend park in albany at 6 p.m with communities coming together so it's all of those things. We can't have black liberation unless we address everything. The violence in our communities, the lack of funding, and being able to talk to people wherever they're at. All right, so the bro has agreed to speak to y'all. Um, this is a brother that I've been inside with. Uh, I love this dude. Um, I call him uh, Deep Waters just because the way he thinks. Um, and he's a reflection of the fight that I went through um, and the fight that all black folks that are political prisoners that are fighting their liberation, white supremacy, sexual inside, um, they have. I mean, we have jewels locked away in there, jewels. Um, we have folks that need to come home. We need our community here. Uh, and this is just one of the brothers, and he got a couple words for you. So, uh, Lamar, um, if you want to speak, um, the mic is yours. Everyone's listening. Everybody in the best of health and spirits. Um, one of the issues that I felt like I could lend my voice to was this whole idea of community, right? A lot of times we are divided by this border that I'm looking at right now and the other side, which y'all are on, right? Mm -hmm. And how are we divided? Like right now is a whole epidemic with the whole COVID thing. And you have some of my political leaders screaming for past and right, PPE and all this, but at the same time, a lot of those things that's being afforded to communities out there are not being afforded to us in here, right? So what I'm saying is, y'all may have unlimited access to testing. That is not afforded to us in here, unless you're 55 and older, and that only been implemented within the last two weeks. So COVID has came through the prison environment and basically ravaged it, while a lot of times just People were fighting with us, standing for us, but at the end of the day, that really was not heard, right? Because a lot of people still came to COVID-related conditions and did not, still don't know if they have it or not because of the lack of testing, right? Another thing that I think that is important is this whole idea of police reform, right? As if once people encounter the police, it is not a whole litany of things that they experience afterwards. One of those things being prison, right? We know that this is a part of a system that's interconnected, right? So if we, if we just focus on one thing and not the whole continuum of criminal justice, which is what happens once a person is, enters the prison system 
as far as dealing with their rehabilitation, the trauma that they experience throughout their incarceration. If we ignore those things, then the one, the little, the little bit that we're asking for, and the little bit of, that we are asking for, we are forgetting a major part that affects our communities because the people that are with behind these walls still have to be returned back to the same communities that they defended to some extent. Fact, so bro. I think that in considering and considering like initiatives like criminal justice or police reform, we must also remember that prison reform or criminal justice and this is a continuum, right? And a lot of times that although we see one part of the machine is broken, I think that the whole continuum is broken because we are forgetting that rehabilitation is the key, right? A lot of times people are returning back to the same community not addressing their primary issues because the state deems that they have other primary issues like drugs or anger when not knowing a lot of our primary issues stem from years of trauma that we encountered. Talk about it. To a number of different reasons, but Talk yeah, it's about it. that person does their sentence and never um, addresses any of their primary issues, only the issues that the state deems necessary in order to make parole, in order to make uh, conditional release dates, right? So then we see why people are ineffective as a whole. We think that it's something that we're not offering as a community, but one thing that we're ignoring as a community is the continuum of criminal justice. So let's not just focus on one part of it, let's focus on it as a whole. And that's basically what I saw I needed to lend to the discussion this morning. Yo, Thank so, you. nah. Oh my listen, gosh, listen. thank you so much. <laughs> and, and people um, are, are, are commenting and, and saying, yes, 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 preach Lamar. Um, they, they are hearing you and um, my name is Jamaica and I appreciate you sharing that, not just with me, but with other people that are watching this video. And we've had thousands of people watch every single video that we have put forward. So know that what you're saying now will reach so many more people and allow them to know why this fight is important. This fight that we've been in to end not just police brutality, but reform in our jails and prisons. Um, because these are human beings, you are worthy Absolutely. of this fight. Thank you. I appreciate you, Mr. Baker Mouth. Thank you. <laughs> no doubt. So, so I'm going to step off. I'm going to talk to my bro. We don't get a chance to talk too much. I'm going to let you end it. Um, I appreciate you all. Um, if, and if, how long we got left on here? Oh, we, we, we wrapping up. We are, are over time. We are wrapping up. So you go talk to Lamar. I'm going to say goodbye to our Facebook, um, community. Next Monday, y'all. I'll be back. Oh, listen, y'all, um, anyone that knows me happens to know that I am also a person of faith. I believe that the, the world and the universe gives us messages and, and puts things in our path. And sometimes we simply need to be open to listen and to recognize what is in front of us. This is indeed one of those moments, and it's the most obvious kind. Um, often it's not so obvious. You, you've really got to be paying attention and looking, but how obvious is this moment that Sean's phone would ring right now to have that message come from inside the wall when we're talking about Black August and Black liberation and the need to end cages, which we talked about all last month for the Freedom Tour, and which is the foundation of Black August. It was black people imprisoned who demanded freedom it was about calling for the end of political prisoners the end of the prison industrial complex that people inside have also organized time and time again and as we heard from lamar these are human beings who are facing even more than the oppression that we face out here and we need to end it we need to end the prison industrial complex. We need to end using prison and jail as some form of a solution to the ills of our society because it has never worked and it never will. We must ensure that every individual knows what true freedom feels like. And during Black August, it means a lot, including the local individuals that are facing trauma and pain or going through the justice system those that have been abused by police in Albany, Schenectady, Troy, and Saratoga, and other places as well. 
those that have gone into the justice system, which is unjust, and seen the harm and the disparities based on your race, your economic status, and your gender identity, especially when non-conforming. All of those things show us, and going to the other side, that when people come back home, as Lamar talked about, it is every aspect of the justice system, from policing, to judges, to DAs, to what the living conditions are like inside our jails and prisons because it is inhumane. And then the lack of support and resources for when our people come home, when they are lucky enough to do so. So when we talk about Black August, when we talk about Black liberation, remember all of those things. Remember Lamar's voice, hear it in your sleep, find ways to move forward an agenda that will bring us the liberation that we all deserve. Join us on Wednesday in Albany and meet other groups and organizations that are doing work in different ways and find out how we can work collectively together and the division in black communities and all communities because it simply is trying to lift up white supremacy and cause further harm. This is about liberation. This is about justice. Our unity will push that forward. Thank you for a very special edition of Monday Live for all of us. We will see you next Monday, but I'm sure we'll see you before then. Everyone have a blessed day and stay safe.